So I, I will uh, introduce a little bit this uh, presentation uh, talking about vaginal atrophy and the epidemiology and the diagnosis of vaginal atrophy. And then uh, I will move to our study to form the women uh, who were breast cancer survivors. The first thing that uh, uh, I would like to address is that vaginal atrophy has very different symptoms and signs and the objective signs. So it's really difficult to choose one of these symptoms or signs uh, in order to make a diagnosis. And if we do, if we do not perform a correct diagnosis, uh, clearly we don't have a, a, a epidemiology, we, we cannot perform a correct epidemiology, and we cannot uh, compare the different studies. Uh, so um, here we see the symptoms of vaginal atrophy, dryness, dyspareunia, burning, itching, dysuria, the signs, uh, objective signs ob observed by the gynecologist when, uh, when he, 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 he performs a, 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 a counseling with the, with the, with the subject. Uh, and the, there are also objective signs, like uh, the uh, maturation index of the epithelium or, or the uh, acidity of the vagina measured uh, by a pH evaluation. So uh, um, we, uh, we perform a, a we performed an epidemiological study in Italy to evaluate uh, when vaginal atrophy, uh, uh, what is the prevalence of vaginal atrophy, and we use the objective sign, subjective sign, and uh, uh, symptoms. And uh, I will show you after uh, after this slide what was the, uh, our uh, way to diagnose of vaginal atrophy. And you can see here that. Uh, uh, we performed two studies. The Agatha study, that was an epidemiological study uh, in postmenopausal women, and we were surprised to see how frequent was vaginal atrophy in women. Uh, you see here that the vaginal atrophy was about uh, a prevalence of 80%, about 80% of women, but just one year after the menopause, 65% of women suffered from uh, vaginal atrophy, from symptoms from vaginal atrophy. And uh, in the second study, we look at, uh, uh, we look at, the, at the prevalence of these uh, uh, symptoms at, of vaginal atrophy in perimenopause, in young women, younger women, through the menopausal transition. And you can see here that uh, it is not really a rare event, even in younger women, uh, 40 to, 50 to 45 years of age, we already have 18% 18, 18 uh, of prevalence of vaginal atrophy to reach uh, the values observed in the first year after the menopause. Uh, we can uh, make the diagnosis of vaginal atrophy uh, by uh, the vaginal health index. As you know, the vaginal health index that was published by uh, Bachmann several years ago, uh, taking into consideration several aspects of the vagina, overall elasticity, uh, fluid secretion and consistency, pH, epithelial mucosa, and moisture. And uh, uh, to each of these uh, items, she, there is a grade of this uh, score for each of these items. And when the, the sum of this uh, score is below 15, and there is a presence of subject symptoms, we can perform the diagnosis of vaginal atrophy. This is a rather complex uh, uh, method to perform a diagnosis of vaginal atrophy. Uh, in our, um, in our is not going. In our study, on uh, ep epidemiological study, uh, both, the, both the one in postmenopause and the one in perimenopause, we used a, a more simple uh, way to make the diagnosis. Basically, we uh, used the symptoms, subjective symptoms, the symptoms of vaginal dryness that was the most prevalent, a, a pH a measured pH above five, and one, uh, the presence of one of the following signs. It, it, it was sufficient to have one of 
of, of the list of these signs, vaginal dryness, mucosa pallor, thin, rugged thinning, and mucosa fragility of petechia. And uh, with, with, uh, this, the, with this, uh, uh, in this way, we performed our epidemiological uh, evaluation. And we may say that our uh, analysis of prevalence of uh, uh, vaginal atrophy using this method was very similar to another epidemiological study performed in the same period in Italy, the Eves study, that used the Bachmann criteria. So we may say that uh, the Bachmann criteria that are very difficult to perform a complex uh, can be overcome by a simple, a more simple way to make a diagnosis. And we have the, with the similar uh, uh, efficacy. But we may say also that basically it, it, lasts, it, 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 it is sufficient, uh, one symptom, very frequently is sufficient, one symptom is to make a diagnosis. Uh, you see here that uh, in the uh, women that, uh, in which were, we perform a diagnosis of vaginal atrophy, 82% uh, uh, of these women uh, had a diagnosis of vaginal atrophy, and in 97% of these was present vaginal dryness. So it is sufficient to ask if the patient has vaginal dryness uh, just to uh, perform uh, an almost certain diagnosis of vaginal atrophies. And besides vaginal uh, uh, dryness, is also the most bothersome symptoms referred by the women, more than dysporenia, itching, burning, or dysuria, vaginal dress. Even if all these symptoms are present, uh, the most bothersome of this, uh, among these is uh, referred as vaginal dryness. So we have to concentrate uh, on vaginal dryness, dryness as the principal symptoms, the most bothersome symptoms, the ones that make a uh, make help in the diagnosis of vaginal atrophy. And when we have vaginal dryness, uh, we have to uh, start to think to treat these women uh, independently of uh, making a, a real uh, diagnosis with the pH and uh, or a maturation index or whatever of uh, vaginal atrophy. And besides, you see uh, here, if we ask to the women in postmenopause, this was a, 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 um, an epidemiological evaluation in 1,000 women in Italy. 75% of these were in postmenopause, and the, uh, the people asked, uh, "What are the symptoms, most bothersome symptoms of the menopause?" And clearly, uh, as we know, uh, the women referred hot flashes, but after hot flashes, they referred vaginal dryness and the urinary disturbance also. So you, you may say as these symptoms are very uh, frequent, is very bothersome, is remembered by the human and uh, defines uh, in many ways the menopausal the, the, the hypoestrogenic condition. So how can we treat uh, vaginal dryness? Um, here there are uh, some uh, guidelines uh, that we recommendation uh, wrote, that we wrote in, in Italy with the Italian Society of Menopause uh, and uh, the, the two Italian societies that uh, uh, treat the menopause. And uh, uh, among the non-hormonal treatments that we may use locally, uh, you see we may use lubricants or moisturizing agents. Lubricants clearly uh, when uh, uh, to help during the intercourse and uh, uh, moisturizing agents instead in order to uh, rehydrate the mucosa and give a, a more long-term effect on the mucosa of the, of the vagina. Then uh, these uh, are also considered first-line treatment for women that uh, start to suffer from uh, vaginal uh, dryness. Uh, but uh, in post menopause, basically, mainly, we may use also, and uh, there is indication to use also uh, local modulation of hormone receptors. So we may use estrogens, local estrogens. We may use uh, the EPO uh, there uh, as uh, uh, suppositories. 
testosterone, eventually testosterone, or creams containing phytoestrogens. All this uh, treatment goes to stimulate uh, mainly estrogen receptors, but also androgen receptors in some, in some way. Uh, otherwise, uh, we may use uh, uh, hormone replacement therapy when there are other symptoms, uh, other than uh, uh, vaginal symptoms, or uh, systemic hormone receptor modulators uh, like ospimifen that uh, oh, I think, I suppose uh, all of you knows, uh, knew, know, uh, that is a serum administered uh, daily, uh, every day, uh, continuously. Um, now, recently, ospimifen uh, received uh, the, the indication as first-line treatment for uh, vaginal uh, atrophy. Other than that, we may use, but uh, other than that, we may use other uh, physical methods, physical methods like laser. Uh, many of you probably have used laser. There are two types of laser, erbium or laser CO2, CO2. CO2. But uh, you see, they, they have similar efficacy and uh, uh, they are effective. At least uh, we, we, we believe they are uh, effective. But recently, uh, or eventually radiofrequency. Recently, particularly so laser that is more um, used than radiofrequency, you see, uh, there are some data, appears some data in the literature, uh, this is in, in physiological, in, in women in physiological postmenopause, showing that the administration of laser was not better than uh, local uh, mo moisturizing agents in the long, uh, in, in the in the in, in improving the symptoms, and this study performed in postmenopausal women was also confirmed recently in a JAMA pu uh, publication by Castello Branco, showing that the same result also in women uh, in breast cancer survivors. So uh, basically. Uh, Laser is effective, but it's, it can be used. Uh, it, no, its efficacy is not really greater than a chronic moisturizing agents administration. Uh, then uh, laser, it also uh, there are there is concern about the long term efficacy and the safety of this treatment, and. I will say that now I would uh, uh, try to concentrate your attention on the third point. It is side effect uh, because uh, usually when uh, the vagina is very uh, thin, uh, laser works less because it needs water uh, to to exert its effect and may induce. Uh, discomfort and transient burning, and it is that is not really well accepted by women with uh, uh, an advanced vaginal atrophy. Uh, now we come to uh, to our uh, to um, to the device that uh, we uh, used in our study. Uh, this is device uh, that was. Um, uh, Developed by uh, Dr. Kundemi, who in postmenopausal women is a vaginal natural oxygenation device, basically, a device uh, that gives uh, oxygen within the vagina uh, uh, along with uh, hyaluronic acid. The, um, Dr. Kundemi uh, conduct, uh, performed this pilot study on women in physiological menopause. Uh, reporting positive effect of this treatment. Basically, you see here uh, the device. Uh, basically, um, uh, there is a cannula that is inserted inside the vagina, and uh, through this cannula, uh, we uh, uh, there is uh, we uh, put a, a flux a, a flow of only oxygen for ten minutes. Uh, so we have a flow of 10 minutes through the cannula within the vagina uh, of pure oxygen uh, at 95% uh, of pure oxygen that goes in, inside the vagina and flew inside the vagina for 10 minutes. Then after these 10 minutes, 
there are other five minutes in which oxygen is combined with a, a hyaluronic acid solution, a 2% uh, solution of hyaluronic acid. So the entire treatment lasts 15 minutes. And this treatment is repeated at two, at, uh, two weeks interval for five times. So basically the, the treatment lasts almost three months uh, with uh, with the, these two weeks uh, treatment intervals. Uh, why uh, Dr. Condemi choose uh, oxygen and hyaluronic acid? Uh, he based his, uh, his, his uh, intuition on the, on, on the fact that uh, oxygen tension within the tissue, uh, on the fact that the oxygen tension within the tissue increases basically uh, wound healing and uh, the production of collagen by fibroblast. So it stimulates the production of collagen by fibroblast, and this should be very important for the stroma of the uh, for, of the vagina. And also that uh, increasing oxygen tension within the uh, the, uh, the tissue increases the production of VGF. So the uh, the growth factors they increase vascularization of the vagina. And when we increase the vascularization of the vagina, we increase trophism, but increase also uh, hydration and uh, we reduce uh, vaginal dryness. Then uh, the addition of a, a very low molecular weight hyaluronic acid um, has the advantage that uh, at this small weight, hyaluronic acid does not remain in the surface of the vagina, but enter in, inside the uh, stroma, inside the, 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 the vaginal wall, and uh, still it also goes to stimulate the collagen production uh, by fibroblast. So basically, there is a synergistic effect or a combination of the effect of oxygen and the hyaluronic acid in improving uh, collagen synthesis uh, uh, by the vaginal wall. Um, we did the study not in physiological postmenopausal women, but because we are uh, an institute working uh, or in collaboration with the oncologist, uh, we saw there a, a very interest uh, uh, target of women, uh, particularly in, uh, in women that were uh, breast cancer, who were breast cancer survivor and were treated with, uh, as you know, with uh, either aromatase inhibitors or tamoxifen antihistogens for uh, um, as a uh, for the. Uh, for the to, re to reduce the recurrence of, of cancer. And you see here in this uh, epidemiological uh, study uh, that these women, this type of women, suffer much more for gynecological collateral effect than other women with cancer, for example, women with the hematological cancer or other cancers. Uh, so this is a particular, uh, and this uh, type of side effect often uh, induce women to reduce uh, or to stop the adjuvant tre treatments. So it's very important that these women uh, try to, to see if we can improve uh, the symptoms and they eventually the quality of life. The study uh, that I'm going to, to show you uh, has been recently published. The, here is the, the reference of the study uh, in Climacteric. So you, if you want, you can find it the uh, the entire study in, uh, in published in this journal. Basically, uh, the study was performed, as I said, on 40 women surviving brain cast breast uh, cancer on endocrine therapy, and they were on endocrine therapy, uh, basically either aromatase inhibitors or generate analog and uh, tamoxifen. Their mean age was 46 years of age. They were rather thin. Uh, they were very low BMI. Uh, almost, uh, almost all of them were in a stable relationship, and 90% uh, uh, of them had performed chemotherapy before aromatase inhibitor or generic anagoyen tamoxifen. 
So th these were really uh, hypoestrogenic uh, women, really hypoestrogenic women. And we are going directly to the, to, to the result. Uh, they were treated, as I said, uh, with the, the application of, a yellow, of a oxygen and hyaluronic acid for 15 uh, minutes. Uh, uh, every 15 days for five times. Uh, on the top of the slide, you see the, the arrows indicated the uh, treatment period, the treatment uh, period. And you see uh, here the uh, vaginal health index score. In this case, we performed the vaginal health index score to, to have an objective evaluation of, of, of the result. And you see uh, that uh, at, at the beginning, at B0, uh, they had a very low vaginal health in this score. The score was 9.5. Uh, and we know that the cutoff to make a diagnosis of vaginal atrophy is 15. So they basically were all below uh, this cutoff. They all had uh, vaginal atrophy. But you may see that after uh, the application of uh, uh, the treatment, our treatment, we have the rapid improvement in the vaginal, oh, sorry, 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 rapid improvement of the vaginal health in the score. And after four administration, we uh, basically, the, the mean value uh, went up to the cutoff for uh, vaginal atrophy. And basically at the end, we were as mean value above the cutoff of vaginal atrophy. So uh, basically these women were had been cured by the treatment. Uh, in, indeed, if we look at the, the number of women that uh, in which the, the percentage of women uh, with the diagnosis of vaginal atrophy, we see here that uh, at baseline, we had 100% of these women had a diagnosis of vaginal atrophy, and then the uh, this diagnosis, the prevalence of this diagnosis progressively decreased, and at the end, at the B5, only 18% of these women had again uh, and still uh, uh, vaginal atrophy. Then you see a column there, uh, follow up, it means follow ups, is was performed 30 days after V5. Uh, and they, uh, you see that basically the, the data uh, remains stable, the fat remain, uh, remains stable. Uh, here again, you see at the top of the uh, slide the, the vaginal health index and the modification of the vaginal health index during treatment and uh, with the follow up. And contemporaneously, in the two graphs below, you see the modification of the visual analog, analog scale score uh, of pain during, during the intercourse or of vaginal burning. And you see is, uh, that concomitantly with the, the improvement of the vaginal health index, we have a contemporaneous reduction of pain during intercourse and of uh, 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 sensation of burning. But the, the most dramatic effect, I think, is uh, the uh, effect on uh, hydration or on vaginal dryness or uh, lubrication. And you see, because you see your health uh, as uh, rapid was the response of these symptoms to the treatment. Uh, already after one application, at V1, we had an improvement of the symptoms, and then after uh, uh, four application, basically we reached maximal effect on on this effect on this on this uh, uh, item. Uh, basically, lubrification was uh, improved maximally uh, within uh, the treatment uh, and very rapidly. And this is this is very important because when we look the, at the uh, epidemiological data on, uh, um, on the ANGEL study performed in perimenopausal women, so in the women in the tra in transition of the menopause, we saw that uh, basically dryness, vaginal dryness was the most important component that of vaginal uh, atrophy that impact on female sexuality. This is the uh, female sexuality inventory 
index with all the items within that scale. You see the desire, arousal, lubrication, orgasm, satisfaction, dyspareunia. And you see that uh, for all these items, vaginal items, uh, dryness uh, enter in, in influencing this uh, this item in in in, in, uh, in uh, affecting this item. So uh, we may say that vaginal dryness affect all uh, the items of female sexuality and female sexuality. So improvement in in, in these uh, bothersome symptoms uh, is very important also to have a, a consequence improvement in female sexuality. And indeed, in our women, we look at that female sexuality, the modification of female sexuality uh, during treatment with, uh, um, uh, with the, uh, vaginal oxygen uh, hyaluronic acid. And you see here, it, this uh, these are uh, all the, the items, desire, arousal, lubrication, orgasm, satisfaction. And you see here that uh, from the beginning, that is the black uh, column, we have a progressive increase at visit three and five of uh, uh, the items and also at follow-ups, uh, maintenance of follow-up of the improvement. So uh, we don't only improve the symptoms, but we have an impact, a very important impact on sexuality of these uh, women. Remember that this, almost these women had uh, a stable relation. So they had the possibility to regain their the sexuality, at least in part of their sexuality. And this is very important as in, in uh, the quality of life of these women. More than that, also we look at that the uh, urinary distress inventory uh, just to see if there was also th these women were suffering from uh, uh, dysuria or dis disturbances, urinary disturbances, and whether uh, this treatment was able to improve these uh, disturbances. Indeed, as you see here, uh, the, the 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 score was already low. So they, they didn't suffer very much about uh, dysuria or urinary disturbances, but still uh, during treatment, we have an improvement also of these uh, disturbances, a significant improvement also of these disturbances that were low at baseline, at baseline, but were also reduced significantly by the treatment. So that, that was the publication, the, the, the data that we have uh, published uh, until now. now. Now I want to show you what, what are we, our preliminary uh, data on, uh, uh, on other um, aspect that we are going to uh, evaluate uh, in these women. Uh, basically, we increased the number of women in uh, under study. So from 40 now we are uh, probably more, but we are around uh, 86. So uh, we have doubled the number of subjects uh, under treatment. Uh, you see there the age, uh, the age remains similar, 47 years of age. And uh, uh, still the, we have included the women on uh, Tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors, and generate analogs. And uh, by doubling the, the data, we still have basically the same result. These are the results on 83, 86 subjects, and not and more on 40, but 86 subjects. And you see there that we are still have this increase in, uh, in uh, these are preliminary data, so uh, excuse me. You want to excuse me if they are not very well uh, performed, but the graphs are not well, very well performed, but you see also the analysis. But you see here that uh, basically we continue to see the same effect. So uh, we, it was not uh, that we selected a particular type of women, uh, that the small sample of women was uh, respo of responsive women, we, st we still are confirming uh, the same data, as you see there, the improvement of well, index and the progressive reduction of women with uh, a diagnosis of vaginal atrophy from 100% uh, basically to 70%, 17% as in our original uh, group. 
Uh, it's similarly, you see the uh, increase in hydration and secretion that was uh, uh, that I already showed you in, in our original group. Uh, with the decrease in the uh, dysporemia and uh, the improvement, you see uh, uh, again the improvement in uh, sexuality uh, that is confirmed also in this uh, enlarged group of uh, of women. So this is very important just to 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 to, to have a continuous co uh, confirmation that our original data were were correct and. Uh, uh, and the, the analysis was appropriate. But uh, then we asked, uh, we asked what, uh, no, the other things, the other point that I want to show you is the, uh, within the vaginal health index score, there is an evaluation of pH and the evaluation of pH is not the real data, but the evaluation of pH remains stable. That means that uh, this type of treatment does not in, uh, induce an acidification of the vagina. Mm -hmm. So the effect is mainly on the stroma, on the vascularization, on the collagen, but is not on epithelial maturation. Because if we, uh, for epithelial maturation, maybe we, we need to have estrogen, mm -hmm. the administration of estrogen that favors the maturation of the epithelium, and then the glycogen and the lactobacilli, uh, whatever. Uh, we are trying to see if uh, the original uh, protocol designed by Dr. Condeni with the five uh, treatments of 15 minutes every 15 days uh, is sufficient, or if increasing the number of treatments, we, have, we may have better uh, results. But in the, and indeed, here, here you see the first group uh, uh, preliminary data, or the first group in which we tried the treatment prolongation. Instead of uh, administering the uh, therapy for five times, we administered the therapy for seven times. So we added a, 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 an administration at the V5 and administration at V6, uh, and then a follow up, a follow up period. And you see that we have a uh, a plateau in the effect. Basically, after the, the first five administration, we reached the, a peak value in vaginal health index that was not anymore increased by uh, the uh, additional two treatments. So basically, we may say that it's sufficient to use uh, the five administration. We, these are preliminary, but uh, we, we are rather confident confident with this result because uh, I don't have here in the graph, but uh, I have seen our primary data in a greater, in a larger population. Uh, we may say that we are rather confident to say that it's not necessary to increase the number of uh, administration to have an improvement, uh, a, a greater improvement on, on the vaginal health index. And similarly also, when we look at the uh, different items of uh, uh, the female sexual inventory, uh, uh, you see if index, the female sexual index, uh, you see uh, that uh, the increase from V5 to V7, basically we don't have any additional improvement. So uh, we may say that um, the original uh, treatment, the, the original protocol is sufficient to have the maximum effect. Then uh, we, we are looking also to the long-term effect of this uh, treatment. Uh, basically, if the treatment remains or if vanishes after a, a certain time. So we uh, basically, we recalled uh, the first 20 women that were treated. We recalled them after a mean time of about 10 months. Uh, 10 months, and you see the, the recall, uh, recall uno, when we, 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 we uh, recall them, you see that the vaginal health index remains higher than at baseline. Basically, it's very similar 
to uh, to the one that was achieved to the values achieved after five treatments. So we may say that this uh, this uh, uh, benefit remains uh, for a long time. And uh, in this in this period, in, in these women, we also performed uh, a, another application in recall one and recall two, other two application to see if we may improve. Uh, a little bit more the, the effect that we have achieved. And we see there, we, 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 there is no the follow-up there, but uh, we, you see that after the first administration at, at Recall 1, we have already a, a tendency to uh, an improvement, a further improvement in the, on the vaginal health index. And uh, here you see, for example, again, the effect on dysporania and uh, the effect on uh, burning. And you see that here the follow up uh, after 30 days, then the recall after nine months, and uh, the second uh, uh, after the, the, the first treatment, or 50, 15 days after the first treatment, you see that the effect on this perineum remains also. Uh, it, it is uh, lost a little bit, but it still is better than at baseline, uh, and the same uh, also on, uh, on burning. Similarly, also the long-term effect on uh, 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 sexuality, you see here uh, that remains uh, from the beginning, uh, we still uh, are uh, at much higher level in all the items of sexuality after nine months uh, after the last administration of, uh, uh, of the vaginal uh, oxygen and hyaluronic acid. So we may say, uh, this data are rather uh, comforting because uh, if we uh, confirm clearly this data, uh, we may say that this is a long-term uh, effective treatment uh, that can be used effectively in, in, many, in many women. So in conclusion, uh, what can we say? That uh, pure oxygen combined with the hyaluronic acid is very easy to use. You don't need a physician. Uh, it, it's sufficient to nurse or whatever to put a, a, a a cannula within the vagina and to allow that uh, oxygen uh, exit from this cannula from, uh, for, for 10 minutes, then there is a, a contemporaneous injection of a hyaluronic acid that, that is inserted into uh, the cannula for other 15 minutes without any particular difficulty. It's very well tolerated, there is no burning, there is a, there is a refreshing uh, since sensation uh, that is very well tolerated by uh, the woman. There are no side effects and uh, uh, is very effective, at least in the symptoms uh, and signs of vaginal atrophy that we monitor it. Uh, in the vaginal index, we have a rapid increase in all the items. And also in sexuality, in all the items of sexuality, there is an improvement. And probably we don't know yet this, but uh, probably it's also effective in, in relieving some urinary uh, symptoms. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'm here for your question. Thank you very much. So we can let the space to the questions. Any questions? Uh, please unmute if you have any questions. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Bindi and I'm a gynecology consultant working in uh, Yas Clinic Hospital in Abu Dhabi. And this is very interesting, the concept of oxygen for VVA. My question is, is there any particular concentration of oxygen that is used alone and in combination with hyaluronic acid? Contraindication, you mean? Uh, no, no, the, no. Uh, the concentration. The concentration is around, is, this is a device that is a particular device that uh, basically extracts oxygen from the air 
and the concentrated oxygen uh, within the cannula, and the concentration is about 95% pure oxygen. And then the other question I had is, what are the contraindications of using this therapy? Well, the contraindication, actually, there is no contraindication because uh, the effect is local. Uh, uh, there are no, 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 no contraindication that I know. Uh, basically, you give uh, oxygen within the vagina, so uh, we, you, you may also have an improvement of uh, um, uh, bacteria that, that uh, are aerobic bacteria, usually lactobacilli, if you really in menopause, you don't have so much uh, lactobacilli, but in perimenopause and women with estrogen, you, have, you may have also an improvement in lactobacilli. And there are some, data, some studies that are going to be performed in Italy on, on this issue. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. But clearly, the lactobacilli, uh, the improvement in the lactobacilli is not a contraindication, but actually is an indication because, you know, when there is high concentration of lactobacilli, you have less probability mm -hmm. to have uh, infection, including uh, uh, HPV infection. All right. So it, it, yeah. it, it mm. should be protective also in this case. Yes, of course. Yeah. So basically, oxygen therapy is going to enhance the uh, lactobacillus uh, flora in the vagina, which is protective. Probably. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I want to ask if, if we can share the caris flow. I, I don't tell the caris flow. Or, device this is only the scheme uh, do you see this this light or not yes basically um, is a cannula inserted inside the vagina with the tube uh, from the tube arrives uh, a pure oxygen that is made by a particular machine and uh, 90%, 95% of pure oxygen uh, is insufflated within the vagina through the cannula. And then uh, in this cannula, there is an hole. You can see uh, uh, a syringe that inserts 2% uh, uh, of hyaluronic acid solution within the cannula. And then this hyaluronic acid is vehicle in, in, inside the vagina by the oxygen. and uh, act as a moisturizing uh, agent they also enter within uh, the mucosa uh, to go through the stroma to stimulate the fibroblast collagen, collagen. I remind you that uh, Professor Cagnacci, we have to leave him at four o'clock, so if you have some more questions, uh, don't be shy. <laughs> uh, Professor, it's Mons from South Africa. Um, uh, the treatment time is about 15 minutes. Um, how does the patient tolerate that? Because I'm sure in our setting, the patient will be in, um, in the doctor's room. So it's not performed in theater under anesthesia and so on. So in your experience, um, how do patients tolerate waiting 15 minutes? Do you play music or because it's quite a long time? No, no there, there is the, no. You, you, if you want, you may play music, but uh, there is there the operator that is talking with the patient, and uh, uh, clearly she is on the on, in a bed, in a bed like uh, a gynecological bed, and uh, beside that, uh, there is no major discomfort. Uh, actually, mm, the sensation is a refreshing sensation, so is is well tolerated. Um, Micro workers that perform this 
the study says that part of the study was performed during COVID uh, uh, pandemic. And uh, these women that are afraid to go to the hospital clearly, all these women came back to perform the treatment. So uh, we, we, we took that as a very uh, 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 a sign of a, of a very uh, uh, acceptable uh, uh, treatment. Thank you. Professor, we, we do have a question from one of the guests that is just writing into the chat. Uh, if the doctor has no information about the cervix condition, is it possible the treatment with this device or if there, or, or if there is a, a scene one, scene two, scene three? So that's the question. Well, the, there is no reported side effect on this, on this, on this effect, uh, by, by this treatment. So I think there is no uh, contraindication. Um, when we uh, go back to the, the original uh, answer on uh, lactobacilli, you, you, we may say that uh, clearance of uh, HPV from the cervix can uh, is a mechanism of uh, uh, amelioration is a mechanism uh, through which the uh, initial lesion goes uh, to cancer. No, it, it, if if there is a clearance of HPV, uh, we may not have cancer, and uh, many of these uh, women infected with HPV have clearance of the virus before uh, developing real the real cancer. And the clearance can be improved by uh, uh, the presence of lactobacilli. So I think that this is not really a contraindication to 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 use this type of treatment. Actually, uh, it may be a treatment, but uh, really this, this is too much to go. Uh, 